Hello, RHSI members, hope you're doing well. I'm going to bring you for a little tour around the garden. So bear with me, it's just me holding the, the, the camera, the phone. Uh, it's a beautiful evening here and we're going to just try and look at as many plants uh, in a quick little walk around. So I hope you enjoy the walk. Um, I'm just going to go into full screen. So looking over towards the house, we have this beautiful daffodil, white lady. I just absolutely adore this daffodil. And it's such a good one. Tall, elegant, beautiful scent. Really old, going back to the 1890s, I think. It was a cut flower then. I just think it's gorgeous. I remember seeing it years ago down in Angela Jupe's garden. Angela has a great collection of Narcissus. Um, yeah, so there's lots of different ones here in this area. Um, some of them I don't know the names of, but this one here is Segovia. Segovia. And it's tiny. You can see it's a really small little flower. Um, perfect for growing in a border. You know that it's not going to take up too much space with its leaves. None of us like all those dirty leaves after they finish flowering. That's White Lady again. So gorgeous. So gorgeous. Um, it's been a tough winter here. Some of the pseudopanics haven't done that well. And I think when a pseudopanics looks like this, it probably means it's dead. Even though I know some people say to me, do they, are they supposed to look dead? Yes, they kind of have a dead appearance, but I know when they're really dead. <laughs> so just looking down through, it's all a little bit scruffy. There's pots everywhere. We've only a week. This day week, um, we open to the public on the 28th. And we're going to be open Wednesday to Saturday. We're not going to open on Sundays anymore. Sunday's going to be a day off. So Wednesday to Saturday, 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. So that's the big rush now is to get everything ready for, for opening. Over here, I'm planting lots of Alstroemeria Indian summer with the pink lichness hill grounds. And there's loads of lichness gone into this bed as well mixed with GM Tolly Tangerine and GM Red Tempest. Um, and this whole area here is going to be a whole new display of dahlias this year. They're all new dahlias. There's about 250 dahlias going in. And they're not singles. I know I've been going on about single flower dahlias for years now. But I'm going back to a little bit of blousiness. Just a little bit of blousiness. We all need a bit of blousiness. So they're all growing on very slowly actually down in the bottom tunnel. So that'll be, I think these areas will be looking very different. Really vibrant colors over here in Fred's garden and then getting a little, little less vibrant in this side. I'm not gonna tell you more, but it, uh, it, it's, it's a plan I've been working on for the last year uh, and weaving through vibrant annuals through it. Um, but yeah, lots of color. You can see all the GMs. We're going to have loads of GM Totally Tangerine for sale this year because it's like a GM Totally Tangerine festival nearly. That's a new path I put in a few weeks ago. Um, Sam Hoy did the first part, little part of it and then I did the other part. So it gives you a better view of, just gives you another view of the garden. It gives me more edges to, to garden on as well. So this area here is just jammed full of bulbs. Tulips aren't great. I'm, I've kind of given up on tulips. I, well, not, I don't know, I'm sure I'll go back to them, but I just um, didn't have the budget to buy bulbs the last two years. So uh, it's amazing how they've actually bulked up. Not the tulips, but all the other bulbs. That bed got a feed of manure. Not this winter gone, but the winter before. And it really did make a difference to it. The bulbs, I don't know, bulbs. I, I never think of feeding bulbs. And I wouldn't really think of feeding the manure either, but. Uh, isn't that a lovely corner there? 
the big grass, the Chinatloa, Rubra, one of my own Stelias and a Pulmonaria. So I'm going to bring you into the woodland garden and show you what's happening in there. Daftas now are about to explode here. It's all beautiful whites, polar ice and silver chimes. Um, really gorgeous, tall, elegant daffodils. Love these late flowering ones. I'm possibly on the, the verge of becoming a, a daffodil collector. <laughs> and it's great we have a, a daffodil nursery in the north of Ireland, Esker flower bulbs. Um, Dave has been really encouraging for me. There's a beautiful old daffodil. I don't know which one that is even. Uh, these beds were full of snowdrops. Um, every year I say I'll open for snowdrops, but at least I had an excuse this year not to open because of COVID. <laughs> um, so just this area here, just full of um, Narcissus Poeticus. Just love it, love it, love it, love it. And uh, excuse the bit of a wobble in the camera. It's uh, it's me been a bit wobbly. And the the epimediums that area is covered in epimediums. And you see my favourite, well, one of my favourite, um, erythroniums. This one is called Joanna. Look. Look, 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 look. Oh my God, isn't it just divine? Divine. So I've building up that collection of erythroniums. I'm not sure which this one is, but all I know is that it's beautiful, look. And this is Harvington Snow Goose. I got most of my erythroniums from Finley Collie in Rare Plants Ireland. And that's Erythronium Mini, ha ha. Or we used to pretend we were very posh years ago calling the ha ha a ha ha. <laughs> uh, maybe it was funny at the time. Um, so your erythronium here is sun disc. That's really bulking up well. It's a very, very nice one. Very pretty. So many things I want to show you. And the Uvularia, just an old, an old woodland plant, I suppose. I'm just going to go over here, letting these sort of paths go much wilder now. Um, I don't have any students this year, so they're just kind of, just just more relaxed with the whole garden really, not, not letting it, trying to keep it, only keep as much as we can really. Dicentra Bacchanal, fabulous red, isn't it? Beautiful, it's really spreading there now. The year is there, but it's really over here I want to show you. This is interesting. Uh, these are seedling trilliums. Look at that. And look at this dark one. Look how dark that is. Uh, it's funny how they seed it in this area. Um, I'm a long time growing trilliums. That's Albatum there, that, that one. Lots more trilliums here. I love trilliums. Um, and what's really special is Trillium Bob Gordon. This is Bob Gordon, and many of you probably knew Bob Gordon from the north of Ireland. This trillium is named after him. Billy Moore gave me this. This was a seedling from Bob. Oh, it's a beauty. A beauty. Lovely soft shade of yellow. So anyway, I want to keep going. Erythronium Pagoda. I'm going to see, can I reverse the screen again as I walk out here? Ooh, there you go. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just going to walk out here and I'm going to bring you down to the sand garden. Uh, while I'm walking out, I'll tell you about my next 
um, masterclass. It's late spring, late spring in the garden, and it's on on Thursday the 29th. And it's going to be um, just packed full of the plants that are flowering now in Huntingbrook. That's true Zoom. If you can't make the time, it's on at 7 to 8.30. And if you can't make that time, I record it and I send out the recording. So it's on the website if you want to have a look. I'm going to do one once a month until November. So you can get those details on the website of the monthly Zoom Masterclass. Now, excuse the complete mess of this place. I'm getting these pats done tomorrow. Finally get to finish this area. It's stopped. When the business stopped last year, the pats, uh, I didn't get to finish the pats, but he's coming tomorrow morning. And I have to move, I have to move all of these plants in the last few hours moving them. So it's a good excuse now to get away from doing that. Um, so they're going to be done with Bally Lusk. Really excited about getting them done. Because no matter what, the pat, if pats aren't clean and sharp looking, your garden looks scruffy and that this area just annoys me because of that a quick peep at the sand garden it looks a little bit different at the moment lots of pinks lots of flocks uh, really getting into these flocks these subulata flocks um, and a few different ones there very very nice because you know I put all the succulents in here or I will be putting all the succulents but I'm really kind of could possibly get into alpines as well uh, but what I do need to do is extend the seasons here and that's what I think the flocks are good those those alpine flocks um, and and uh, saxifrage um, and pulmonium that really dark pulmonium um, and aubrecia it's funny I am going back to a lot of old-fashioned plants I'm doing a whole trial on flocks flocks paniculatus and most of them came from Originally come from Russia, I think. They were breeding them there. Now that's what I heard. I don't know if that's true. Love this combination of Primula Old Port, Erythronium Howellii, Geranium Copper, Copper something. I'll tell you the name now in a minute when I see the label. It's just, it's a nice combination. And that Geranium is called Espresso. It's kind of a duller leaf, but it's lovely together. This bed has just got thousands of plants gone into them. These woodland beds. I didn't realise these beds were so big. Until I started planting them. And it's, they're, they're nearly all divisions from the garden. Uh, there's a huge pot of phylum called Big Leaf. Fabulous. And now I'm going to see the correct name of that geranium. Yeah, copper. Copper, copper. And you'll have to look it up. Copper something. It's a fabulous one. Look at all the snouts of plants sticking up. I'm building up a really big collection of polygon atoms. This one is called Red Legs. Isn't that lovely? <laughs> Here's another. Oh, there's so many I'm not even going to start going into them. I'm so afraid the phone is going to call. Someone's going to call me because I forgot to turn the phone off before I started making the video. <laughs> So, fingers crossed it doesn't. Oh yeah, RHS members. Anyone have some nice old primulas you'd like to do swap with me? Do get in touch. Those spring, early spring ones, or the spring, the spring flowering primulas, those real old fashioned ones, really looking to collect them. Anyone interested? Do contact me and we can do a swap. Oh yeah, come in. I want to show you something in here. Two things. I don't know how long this video is supposed to be. I forgot to, I forgot to ask. This is Elysium. Elysium Simonsii. It's like a star anise. Isn't that beautiful? Well, a star, Elysium, a type of Elysium is a star anise and this is Elysium Simonsii. Um, a peep, peep into the woodland. I was, I'd imagine I was supposed to keep this short. A very big collection now of acers. And this acer here is called Tekemensi. Tekemensi. I think it's from Korea. Very, very nice. But the rhodos are really starting to flower. Well, not really. I mean, this is the best one. A lot of them are so small still. 
I really do need to come back in my next life, I think. Isn't that lovely? Don't ask me the name, but I'm more confused than ever on rhododendrons. I was down in Kilmacurra last weekend. It was looking wonderful. So lovely. So just going to show you a few more plants and then I'll let you go and I better get back to work. A fantastic blue pulmonaria called Miss Ellie. It's much better than blue enzyme. It's taller, it's more reliable. It's a better plant. It's Miss Ellie combined there with Dicentra Stuart Boodman with its bluey silver leaves. Beautiful, beautiful. So during the winter, I've been kind of naughty. I've been collecting a lot of different plants. I've been collecting Corydalis online and I've been collecting um, Epimediums. And this one is called Pink Constellations. Fabulous. Um, I have about a hundred, don't tell anyone. This one here is called Domino. Um, but maybe I'll do another video in a few weeks time for, for you or come and visit and you'll see the epimediums. Oh, look at this trillium. This trillium is very special. This is a seedling. Look, look at that. Oh, fabulous. I mean, there's no point in me showing you this back. Everything's so tiny in it. It's all divisions. Beautiful Corydalis called Porcelain Blue. Porcelain Blue. June has that in her garden, beautiful. And June's tulip, tulips will be in full flower. June is open now. Um, she's open. Um, she's open now, yeah, for the tulips. This bed here, I planted so many plants and it's still not full. This is uh, Epimedium Purple Prince. Fantastic Epimedium. There's so many. So basically I'm just doing that layered planting of massive collection now of snowdrops. I've been very secretly collecting snowdrops. Um, and this year through the internet, I've uh, been getting some snowdrops and swapping snowdrops. That's Sulfurium, Epimedium Sulfurium Cuprium. Cuprium, isn't that gorgeous? Ooh, stunning, 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 stunning. Okay. I'm not going to show you much more in this bed because it's packed plants, but they're still tiny. I want to show you a podophyllum, and this is called Chennai hu Huan. Podophyllum Chennai Huan. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. So this area here, for me, it's the most interesting part of the garden because it's got all the woodland stuff and really I don't know. I mean, I say it different times of year that my favorite plants, but it's funny. I was thinking yesterday, what kind of plants do I want to grow older with? You know, what do I see myself gardening with when, as I get older? Definitely woodland plants. Like they're huge woodland beds now, these new ones. But don't tell anyone, but you see that lawn? I am not a lawn person, but I do need it right at the moment because there's nowhere for people to actually gather because uh, we can't use inside. But that whole area is going to be woodland garden in a few years time. Massive woodland beds. And that's what I want to do. I want to spend the rest of my years developing a huge woodland plant collection. And you know, it just, uh, uh, the woodland plants have done so much for me this year, for my head, because it, they had me out gardening in January. If I didn't have those spring plants, as you know, it's not been an easy year for any of us. Those plants get us out there. Oh, look at this primula, neon velvet. It's just one I picked up in a garden center a few years ago. It's very good, very good. Polyanthus or primula neon velvet. So guys, I'm gonna go back to the screen. Janie, how do I do this now? Ooh, there you go. So I hope you enjoyed that walk around. It, um, it's a beautiful evening. I was gonna do this tomorrow morning at sunrise, but just the sun came out there and I thought, why not do it now when it's 
that light is gorgeous kind of hazy light down the valley we didn't get down the valley but sure we'll get down there another day so i hope you get to see us and um shout out to the dublin garden group as well a lot of the gardens are opening if you go onto the dublin uh, dublin garden trail you'll see uh what way the gar some of us are open certain hours some of them are open by appointment but uh i know we're all dying to get going aren't we see oh i know what i'm going to do i'm going to bring you to the glass house and then i'll finish i'm going to try and walk up through the sand garden can you imagine when these pats have all bally lusk on them tomorrow see all the bananas they're out for the day because they were driving me mad they had so much um they had so much green fly on them in the house so i chucked them out for the day more the sand garden oh sorry i forgot i'm still in screen I think I'd be used to filming because we filmed a whole year in the garden for our online class courses, which of course are available on our website, a whole year in Huntingbrook, um, which we filmed all on this mobile phone. Now, look, I have a peep in here. Packed. Packed to the gills. I don't have time now to go through everything with you, but... You can see all these red leaf bananas. I'm gonna have loads of them. Um, problem is they were supposed to be, I was gonna sell them and I'm like, so, I'm terrible. So I think, oh my God, 30 red leaf bananas. Sell them, put them in the garden. Oh, it's such a hard decision. I think I might um, put them in the garden. Loads of cosmos, loads of deliciousness coming on here. Uh, so many, so many plants to be, seedlings to be pricked out. Isn't that good? Oops. So listen, guys. Thank you for watching. And hopefully it wasn't too long. Hopefully I'm out of trouble with Orla. <laughs> and keep up the good work, Orla, with the, the newsletter. It's fab fabulous. Uh, getting great feedback about it from, from uh, friends and volunteers here in the garden. So, all right. Have a lovely evening or whatever time of the day it is. Bye bye.